Hi, it's Mike with Itty Bitty Micro Farms, and today we are going to go over the top 10 mistakes that I believe people make in starting out with the microgreens. So let's get into it. So uh, first thing is when people first start out, they go out and buy way too much equipment. They think they're going to be a million dollar business, and they just buy way too much equipment. Too many trays, too many racks, too many lights, all of it. Too many seeds. Start small and build your business. So starting small and growing your business, this is where we started out. We started out with one rack and about 20 trays of a set, 20 tray sets. Um, and some trays for the tops uh, for weights and stuff. But this is where we started out. See, this rack is not even a four-foot rack. Uh, the lights hang over it. We started with two lights versus doing one that we do now. So, yeah, start with small. Buy the equipment small, buy reused equipment. Um, this rack is, comes from a restaurant that we got for $50. Uh, so just something to put it on and start growing. Uh, so you start learning how to grow. So start small and grow with your business. Then take them profits and spend the money and build things. So, uh, so start small, grow your business, one to two racks. We did have two racks when we started, but we only grew on the one to start with. And uh, it worked great. And then we built up and we started buying more racks and more trays, more everything. But, uh, and we do one light per shelf now. We did do two when we started because that's what we were told to do. It's what we learned. That one, one light per shelf works great. I'm a big believer in it. I think that's the way to go. It's going to save you money on power, on equipment, on the lights itself. So one light per shelf is my recommendation. Uh, light timers are great to have as the light timers um, is not necessary. You can turn them on and off, but these just set it automatically. You can set it up for the 16 hours and eight hours off. So trays, uh, we are a big believer in uh, the bootstrap trays because they're going to last. You can buy the cheaper trays, but you're going to replace them. More often, these trays have got a, life, uh, a one year guarantee on them, and they will replace them if they crack or break or anything else. So, a uh, big believer on bootstrap trays, and there's a link in uh, all our videos on how to buy them. You can go there and buy them. Uh, I appreciate that. And don't need to buy a bunch of stuff. You don't need the extra frills, you don't need the extra stuff. You just need to buy what you need to start and then grow with the business. So uh, number two mistake, uh, big believer in starting small, obviously. And people seem to start with too many varieties and want to do every microgreen variety there is, which there's, you know, there's tons of microgreens you could grow. But start with the easier ones and start with just a handful of them at most five to start with is my recommendation. So, and then, uh, so the top five. Uh, four to five easy ones to grow and do the top five. These are my top five that I recommend to start with. Four mostly. The fifth one is kind of the one I would do fifth uh, if I knew better when I started. So first one, broccoli. One, everybody should be eating broccoli. Uh, it's very nutritious for you. We should all be eating broccoli microgreens. And it's an easy grow for the most part. And it's very, very easy and fast to grow. It grows totally in 10 days from point of seeding to harvest. Uh, we do get our broccoli from True Leaf Market. Uh, there's a link also for these down here. It is an affiliate link. But this is what we use. We use the Waltham 29. If you can get organic, if you can afford that, I would highly recommend doing the organic. It's just better. Uh, but start with what you can afford. Number two, radish. Uh, it's a very nice color radish. You can see it gives that nice uh, red, pinkish stem. And, it, and another one that grows fast. This one actually can grow in about eight days. We do do a 10-day grow with it, but it can grow in about eight days. So, And we do get that also from True Leaf. Is the Triton Purple is what we use, and you get the nice, nice color on it. We get better color than this on ours. So, yeah, we do a little bit better than that, but we do a 10-day cycle with that as well. This actually, peas, you could probably start with these because these are easy to grow as well, but I put them as three because this third for us. 
uh, and we use a speckled pea. Uh, we did do green peas, didn't like them, they were too tenderly. And uh, everybody likes the speckled peas, it's a little bit better. And this uh, grows amazingly in 10 days. It says eight to 14. I do not recommend going 14 days with them, not, not for the way we grow them, because uh, they are going to be crazy long and be falling over. So 10 days is about the perfect time to harvest them. Uh, and they don't get woody or anything like that at that point. So highly recommend the 10 days as, uh, as well. And then a solid mix. Uh, we do a spicy, the spicy solid mix. This one here is the one that we do. And, but any kind of basic solid mix, uh, this is a little bit more mild. This is the organic version, obviously. I would go that if you can. But people seem to like our spicy one. So that's the one we grow. We sell a ton of that in the grocery stores. So uh, another easy grow. It's a, it's a 10 day grow and it grows great. So highly recommend the spicy as well. And then the fifth one is sunflowers. And these burgers right here are the reason why they're on number five. I don't, I, we started with sunflowers in the very beginning as our number one grow. Uh, Cause that's, you know, what we learned to do that they are quick grow. They grow in 10 days as well. They will grow well. If you use our method, we got a video on that, how we grow our sunflowers, but definitely uh, getting the seed hauls off can be a pain at the end, but we get probably 90% of them off. You still have to go through them because not every seed sunflower is going to grow at the same rate. You're going to have some small ones, big ones. So you still got to go through and sort it. So it does take a lot of the big, longest time at harvest. So that's the only reason why. But it is a great product. We use it in a lot of our mixes. Uh, so definitely on the list, but it's five for a reason. Um, we do get our sunflower seeds from Missouri Standard. Uh, they're out in on the West Coast. And uh, they deliver once a month. And they are great, great product. We have great, uh, great uh, success with these sunflowers. They grow well. We obviously buy in the 25 pounds. We currently still have 400 pounds of these because we buy in bulk when we buy everything to get the better price. And uh, they are great. Uh, we do have a video that we're probably going to put out shortly of how to go pick them up and everything else from that. But we did, we did make a video of that as well. But never my top five recommendations of what, one to start with. Uh, starting with uh, two more varieties is not good. Remember that, start no more than five, really start with one and get it down and then keep continue going is uh, what I would recommend. So growing the wrong type of crops. You don't wanna start with the hard ones. Start with the easy five. I see a lot of people that start with the sorrel and trying to figure out a girl, that's a very hard grow. Beets are hard to grow. They take a little bit more special care. Cilantro uh, does pretty well. Um, we got that one down pretty good. It does take some learning curve. And all these are longer grows as well. These are going to take 21 to 28 days on the growing. Uh, so that's definitely not something you want to do in the beginning. You want to get that in that 10 day grow. And number three, growing the wrong crops. This is the two to three ones we just went over. You don't want to do them long crops when you first grow, and you want a quick, quick turnover. Seven days under lights. Eight to ten days is most. Five to seven days under lights. You want to turn that rack over every week because you want to get that money built up. Uh, if you're selling these right away, you want to get your money built up and get growing. And then when you get into six, eight, ten months down the road, start doing the ones that are longer, especially crops, and uh, get them going for uh, restaurants and stuff like that that want them. But don't. I do not recommend starting with the higher ones for sure. Which path would you rather take here? Um, this is the path that we try to choose A to B straight line instead of quickly lines and going crazy and racking your brain. And uh, this is where the frustration starts. And this is where people stop when they start frustration. They don't start with the easy and get your self confidence up of going. So self confidence helped you grow a business faster. So um, number four mistake. I find within germination, people don't do it long enough. They, you know, don't let that tray push up and everything else. They want to get them out of germination. They want to pee. They want to water during germination. Don't recommend any of that. You put them in germination, leave them alone for three to four days, and they're good. Don't water them. Don't mist them. Don't do any of that stuff. So you want to give them time to establish without peaking or watering. 
Uh, this is the root growth, obviously, here. So as they start and get rooted down, they root a little bit more and they start pushing up. This is about the stage that you're going to get them out when they start pushing that tray up about here. So, and then obviously letting them grow the rest of the way. So, uh, this is a picture of the tray. These are radishes. They did have a, the weight on them here and they're pushing up. This is what you want to see. And coming out the side, pushing that tray up, forcing that up. That's when they're ready to come out of germination. And everybody could be a little bit different, three, four days, um, but, uh, depending on what your temperature and your growth area is like. Number five is root hairs versus mold. These are not mold, these are root hairs. As you can see, they're off of one root, off of one stem, and it's hairy, so, you know, root hairs. Uh, this is what root hairs are gonna look like. It's not gonna be mold. New growers start freaking out sometimes at this. Uh, radishes are notorious to look like this when they first come out. So they're, they're, these are root hairs. This is what mold looks like. So these are three different kinds of types of mold. They're spidery, they're not on a root, they're all through the tray, they're on the, the medium, whatever medium you're growing in. Mold usually looks like a spider web or cotton, but also can be yellow spikes, blue grayish colors, round blobs. It spreads and covers more area uh, all over the tray, all over in a section. That's when you're going to know that that is a uh, mold. It needs to be treated, cut out, something along that lines. So if you, when you, we water top water when you first come out of germination. This is a water test. This is also to look for mold as well. You gently water the top. If it looks fuzzy, looks disappear, them are root hairs. If it's still there, still clumped up, that is going to be the mold. So you're going to need to take care of, get rid of the tray, treat, whatever you need to do at that point. Water twice a day is not a scalable. Water once a day, water every 24 hours, they are good as long as you give them enough water. So make sure you're not watering twice a day, but once a day will be good as long as you give them enough water. Number seven is watering before harvest. So you don't want to water within 24 hours of harvesting. So the day, the morning up, definitely don't water. The day before you want to water in the morning if you're going to harvest in the morning the next day, because if you pack them wet, they will look like this and they will look horrible. And yes, I have seen these in grocery stores on some other microgreens growers and they look horrible. So make sure you're harvesting dry so they don't look like this. You don't need to put a paper towel or absorber in the package then. Uh, losing track of time, you know, uh, how long have they been in germination? I don't know, when did you put them in there? I don't, you know. So making sure you're staying on track on time Forgetting when the crop was planted will it give you inconsistent results because if you get them out of germination too late, that's where you're going to get some mold. If you leave them in too little, then you're not going to have the right growth. So you want to make sure that you're planting your crops. Keep records and consistent schedules. This is why we now, versus using spreadsheets, that we use um, seed leaf, which I did a review on that. You can check out. And we're loving that program. and They keep on adding more and more stuff to it. So. Uh, number nine, growing too much. So make sure that growing and knowing what you need to grow and what you're planting, that's why you need to plan your crops. So what are you selling? What are you eating yourself? Don't grow too much. So self, but make sure you're trying all your products. Make sure you know what they taste like. So when people ask, uh, building a business with samples is the best way to build this business is sample, sample, samples. So and then start selling. Uh, this is a picture of ours in a grocery store. This is one of the newer grocery stores we got into. They're starting with four varieties. I plan on them probably expanding, but, and then sell. So but knowing what you're selling. Uh, growing too long. So you don't want to grow too long. Uh, that gets, you know, you get the true leaves, it gets bitter, it doesn't taste right. So overgrowing changes your quality and your taste. So when you get them too long, like sunflowers, especially if they get a true leaf in the middle there, they are going to taste better. Uh, you don't want to sell them. So you want to taste your product and make sure that it's good. So knowing when it was planted and when it should be harvested, again, using a program or a sheet or spreadsheet or write it down somewhere is uh, definitely something you want to do. Um, whether it's sold or not, it needs to be harvested on time. So if it's supposed to be harvested on that time and it's not going to taste good, go ahead and harvest it and give it out as free samples, either yourself, give it away to your family, donate it, Whatever, don't let it go overgrow. 
Um, so again, give consistent products. You give consistent products out, people get the taste, the consistent products all the time. That's when you get your repeat customers and you grow your business. So put in the comments, uh, what mistake have you made uh, with growing microgreens and starting out? What mistakes have you made? What mistakes have you avoided? Uh, something that you wish you would have known before you got started. Uh, put that in the comments. Make sure you check out our uh, How to Maximize Your Shelf Life video, our recommended video for you. And we'll see you in the next one.